Hey what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I've been using the Tamron 28-75 on my Sony a7 III since I bought it. I bought it in June 2018. So it's been quite a while now, I've had it since then and I've been using it as my primary lens since then. I know a lot of you ask on Instagram and Twitter, you know, what lens am I using to take my pictures, take my videos and stuff like that. This is the lens that I've been using and this is the only lens I've been using since then, since I bought it. Um, and I basically just wanted to share my thoughts, why I love it so much and why I've been using it as my main lens. Now, when it came to choosing a lens for my Sony a7 III, I had literally just bought the Sony a7 III. Um, I had it for maybe a month or two and I wanted a setup where I could just have one camera, one lens that would cover nearly all bases pretty much. I wanted to be able to use it for both photo and video. It also needed to be compact and also needed to be affordable. So there were three things there, you know, cover all bases, needed to be compact and needed to be affordable and the Tamron 28-75 was that lens. You know, as soon as it was announced, I pre-ordered it and I got it pretty much on release day. Against the G Master, which is its main rival, it's much smaller and much more affordable. The Tamron weighs 550 grams and the G Master weighs 880 grams. So that's a significant weight reduction there, significant weight difference between both of the lenses. And when I've used size comparison websites, the G Master is significantly bigger than the Tamron. It almost looks absurd <laughs> because the A7 III body is quite small. And the G Master just very much is nose heavy and just looks much, much larger and much, much heavier. The Tamron currently costs around $880 in the US and £750 in the UK. Compared to the G Master, the G Master comes in at $2,200, which is a massive, massive price jump. Um, but then, you know, it is supposed to be a G Master lens. The G Master lenses are meant to be better quality, higher quality. They use better glass and they use better materials. But for most people, $2,200. That, that's quite out of reach, you know, um, that's quite expensive for a lens and for someone like me who was looking for a more budget setup, you know, I do professional photography, I do commercial photography, but I didn't need the sort of quality of a G Master lens. The Tamron is definitely one of the best alternatives to go for. The lens has a nice sort of minimalist understated style that I like about it. It's finished in matte black. It is made out of plastic, it's not metal, but it doesn't feel cheap at all. I still feel like it feels quite expensive and rugged and it has nice sort of mono style text on it which I think looks pretty awesome. Looks almost Japanesey, you know, I think it looks pretty nice, pretty awesome, and I really like the look of it. One thing which is very odd about this lens and I haven't seen before, is that the zoom ring and the focus ring are switched. Traditionally, on most lenses, the focus ring is at the front of the lens and the zoom ring is either in the middle or at the rear of the lens, but Tamron have switched this on this lens and I can only assume this is just to keep the lens compact and as light as possible. You get used to the change quite quickly, I haven't had any issues with it and I've just learned to use the lens the way it is. Focusing is very fast and accurate on the lens, but I think that's also down to the Sony a7 III, which has an amazing for auto-focusing system. And when it comes to video, it's completely silent and very smooth, and that was definitely a main factor for me, because I'm gonna use this lens for a lot of video work, for a lot of YouTube videos, for product work, for product shots, things like that and having focusing which is nice and quiet and focuses very quick, very accurately is very important to me and this lens does it very well. However, when I first purchased the lens, there was a bug. Uh, there was an autofocus bug on the lens where sometimes when you would use it in video or photo mode, it would just not focus properly. It would just refuse to focus and the only way to get it back was to either turn off the camera or take off the lens. And obviously this is a very annoying bug. You know, if you're in, out in the field, you don't wanna have to do something like that. Thankfully, Tamron fixed this issue very quickly within a matter of weeks with the firmware update and I haven't had any focus issues since then. One thing I love about this lens is the close focusing distance. It almost becomes a macro lens. It's fantastic for when I do product reviews. I can bring in an item very close and really sort of focus in on something small on a product, just highlight it. It just makes it very, very useful and sort of expands the capability of the lens, you know, having that sort of macro functionality. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as a dedicated macro lens, but for my type of work, it's been good enough and I've been able to get some nice shots with it. I found the lens to be incredibly sharp in nearly all situations. I've been sometimes blown away by how sharp it is when I look at a picture in Lightroom, when I'm editing a picture or editing a video, um, you know, just be able to see it on my 5K screen, be able to zoom in and really see the details. I've been blown away by how sharp it is. Some people have been saying that it's sharper than the G Master from some videos and reviews that I've read online. However, I don't really know if it is because I haven't used the G Master before. 
but yeah compared to other lenses that I've used in the past this is definitely one of the sharpest ones I've ever used. There are a few things to consider though when it comes to this lens for example the wide end being 28 most lenses usually start at 24 they go from 24 to 70 however this one goes from 28 to 75 so if you're someone who's looking for a wide lens this definitely isn't for you or if you're someone who does vlogging who likes to vlog this lens definitely isn't for you you know when it comes to vlogging I can barely hold it out in front of me to get my face in the frame um, I think a dedicated wide angle lens would be better however Tamron just last week announced that they're bringing the 17 to 28 to full frame Sony cameras which they'll be bringing out later this year which I'll definitely be pre-ordering and it will most likely cover all my wide angle needs anyway. There is noticeable barrel distortion on this lens which isn't an issue if you're taking photos because you can just edit them in Lightroom to even out any lines, even out any curves or anything but if you're doing video and you like to shoot wide angle video then this lens might not be ideal for you because you will notice the barrel distortion. You could edit it out but it's a bit more of a pain to do that when editing video. Other than that, there really isn't much else bad about this lens. Everything else is pretty darn good. This is probably the best lens out there right now if you're looking for a one camera, one lens setup. You know, if you're someone who doesn't want to carry around a bunch of lenses, wants to be able to just keep to one camera, one lens and just shoot, this is probably one of the best setups you can have. You know, I wanted something that was lean, was compact and was affordable. And I think this is probably the best setup you can have right now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm always sharing pictures shot with this lens and shot with the Sony a7 III. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.